All right, so I'm out here walking around the yard trying to figure out where I'm going to start first because this place is a wreck. The garden's a wreck. The yard's a wreck. Um, everything's a mess. I need to get to yard mode. There's limbs blowed down everywhere. Uh, so the people that have been following my channel for a while, you know that I got cancer in uh, early 2020. Um, I suspected I had cancer in March right as the pandemic was starting and in May I confirmed I had cancer so I've been spending the last two years basically fighting cancer so I spent um, pretty much all of 2020 going through cancer treatment I lost around 50 pounds which is why I look way different today than what I looked back then um, I haven't hardly gained any of that weight back I think I've Put on two or three pounds and then i spent all 2021 dealing with the side effects of the chemo and radiation and up until about a month ago i still didn't really feel anything like the old me i'm starting to feel like the old me now but i don't want to get too excited about it because it could change tomorrow that that's kind of one of the things i've noticed is i have a few good days and I get my hopes up that everything's going to go back to normal and then boom huge setback and it takes me weeks to recover from that and that is mentally debilitating in itself you really have no idea so what this video is about a couple of things that have come up recently in conversations um, some of the people that are on my YouTube also follow me on Instagram um, some some people have become my friends you know at least internet friends and they're also even on my Facebook page my personal Facebook page um, and two conversations come up and I kind of want to clarify this even though I've mentioned it in a couple of recent videos the first thing that come up was when I first created this YouTube channel I did it because I thought that some of the old ways of living and surviving were basically getting replaced by city life. So I wanted to go back and I wanted to create a homestead channel where I could share knowledge and I could share the things that I learned or the things that I knew. And my goal was that I would hope that other people would engage in the conversations in the comments and maybe share you know their personal knowledge if it differs from mine or tips or tricks that I didn't know I really wanted my YouTube channel to be like an open conversation I don't care I really don't care how you vote or where you live or if you live in a country or the city or other countries um, I'm gonna be honest with you because of my job I've I've got friends that are in Ukraine and I have friends that are in Russia and I know there's that war going on right now, but I get to hear their side of it straight from them. And I just put up a video that things aren't always what they seem on the internet. And, and that's kind of a good example I should have used in that video too, because my Russian friends don't necessarily support what Putin's doing. And then my Ukrainian friends are kind of saying at least in the areas they live that the media is kind of like I, I don't even really want to go there um but that's kind of what this is about right i i wanted my channel to be a place no matter where you're from no matter what race you are no matter what gender you are no matter where you live no matter how you vote politically you should always be able to feel free to comment and share your experiences and your tips and tricks on any video I put out there and I don't even care like if you stay on topic if I post a video about green beans and you want to talk about corn do it because that's the way all of us learn right sharing information is how we learn that's how we all learn so I'm bringing that up because one of my regular YouTube subscribers tracked me down on another social media platform in order to private message me. And 
I was like, you could have asked in the comments on the video, any video, and I would have answered it probably within an hour or so. And when they told me their response, I, I kind of felt bad. Um, I didn't realize that, that people would feel like that. And I'll just go ahead and tell you the response. The reason why they tracked me down, they actually Googled my name, found my other social media accounts, added me as a friend on one, and then PM me. And the reason why they PM me there instead of asking in the comments is because they didn't want to feel stupid about the question they were going to ask. And I, I'm still even just thinking about it. That just, I'm flabbergasted by that. You should never feel stupid about asking a question. That's how we learn. That's how we evolve. That's so many things go along with that. If, if there's a question you have about any video I post, or even if it's a question about a video I've never posted, I am always more than willing to help anybody. If I have, if I know the answer, I'll tell you the answer. If I don't know the answer, I'll tell you, I don't know, but I'll try to find out for you. So on my YouTube channel, I, I really want it to be an open conversation. That That's kind of like, that was the goal 13 years ago. And, and which leads me into the next thing. I had a person message me today uh, on a Facebook group. So they also sent me a private message. But it was about mostly about my YouTube channel. And the person said, I've been a subscriber now for about five years on your YouTube channel. And I've always enjoyed your videos because they're so raw and uncut. I leave mistakes in there. You know, when I was going through the cancer treatment and recovery, and even still today, I have memory issues. And I'll jump from topic to topic, and I, I don't mean to do that, but that's just part of the part of the healing. So just bear with me. But um, anyways, the person is going on like, you know, I've really enjoyed your channel, and I've been with you now for about five years, and I, I watch every one of your videos. Like, I probably watch every video you've ever uploaded so i was like i really felt good about that like i'm helping a person out with my knowledge is helping someone else live the life that i live or at least um move toward that kind of a lifestyle so it made me feel really good inside and um so i thank the person for their kind words and you know for being a loyal subscriber and then I led in with, because of the previous thing that I told you about, I said, if you ever have a question about anything I post on YouTube, even if it's off topic, always feel free to ask in the comments because that's how we learn. That's how we evolve, right? I don't want to like repeat everything I just said, but that's kind of what I replied as. And then the person said this. They're like, well, to be honest, I, I do kind of have like a question because I follow several other YouTube channels and I was like sure you know ask me anything and he goes how come you only have 900 well actually at, well it was today so it was actually 900 he's like how come you only have 900 channel or 900 subscribers and um, then they mentioned something else and and I knew what channel they were talking about when they mentioned it and he said something to the effect and i'm kind of paraphrasing this whole conversation but and trying to do it with like the memory issues like what have i already said what do i need to say um but they went on to say that there's another channel they're subscribed to and like if i post a video like a week later they post very similar content and where my video will get like 50 or 60 views in a month their video gets like 120,000 views in the first hour the guy has told me that he's seen that happen several times and and I do know there are channels out there that do that um, when I create content for my YouTube channel I'm basically letting you into my life right I'm letting you know what works for me on my homestead. It may or may not work for you on your homestead. 
But one of the things that I try to do is I try to keep the content where I'm not uploading the same thing 10,000 other home setting channels have has already discussed. And I, I try to keep my content unique. Now I know sometimes that's not always possible, especially when you're doing things like beekeeping and everybody is kind of having like similar problems at similar times of the year, even gardening. Um, you know, seasons are seasons and a lot of animals follow seasons. A lot of, you know, fruits and vegetables, they're season bound. So a, a lot of us are having the same problems at the same time. But there are also YouTube channels out there that, that steal other people's content. And they have these massive amount of subscribers and then their channels monetize where mine's not and then they make money off of my idea and I'm, I'm not upset about that but it kind of plays into that my channels existed for 13 years I have 900 subscribers over 500 videos um, I, maybe it's because I'm ugly I don't know <laughs> like if you know me in, a, in like real life you know I joke about everything I I try to keep it under control on my YouTube videos but I, I do joke literally about everything in life. Um, so, yeah, maybe I don't have subscribers because I'm ugly. The other thing is, too, and this come up from a conversation. Um, I, don't, I don't even honestly know I want to lead, like, how to lead into this because it wasn't really supposed to be part of this video. And I'm already at, like, 11 minutes, so I'll try to make this quick. If, if you're looking at any topic on YouTube, let me give you an example I know. If you just go search for yoga on YouTube, and then you look at the images, the preview images, you know, that still frame of the video where it's like, these are the videos that match yoga. And you look at those images, and then you look at how many people watch those videos. Do you really think those people are watching those videos to learn about yoga? So, when you ask why I only have 900 subscribers, or maybe my interpretation is that if I dressed provocatively as a male... <laughs> Uh, maybe my subscriber count would go up to 901. Um, I really don't know. But one of the things I've noticed for several years now is that a lot of these channels that also have a lot of subscribers, um, the, the people are dressed in ways you wouldn't expect them to be dressed out in a garden or out taking care of goats or chickens or rabbits or bees and uh, they're one and a half seconds away from a wardrobe malfunction and they have massive subscribers and they have massive views of their channels I, I don't want those people subscribing to my channel I, I really don't you're not gonna get that kind of content here what you are gonna get is honest content and I share basically what I know about my homestead and what I learn about my homestead and you're not ever going to probably I don't even think I've even got a video of me in shorts which is funny because I wear shorts all the time in the summertime but that's that's kind of what I'm getting at you know I, I try to keep my content real it's not always good content either because there are bad things that happen on homesteads and to be perfectly honest with you, the bad is almost equal to the good. Now, different seasons, because homesteading is kind of a seasonal thing, right? You got spring, summer, fall, and winter. And, you know, you can have good and bad in any of those seasons. Um, and, and it's about a 50-50 split. A um, good example is a lot of people... Or not a lot, but you know, some of my subscribers, they all love the video I uploaded about the goat being born. That was like a happy moment, right? And then a couple weeks later when I lost one of those goats, 
they they wasn't so happy about the that video but that's the kind of stuff like i give you that content because that really happens in real life if you're going to be raising animals um and doing a homestead husbandry so you're going to be like you know having baby goats or baby chickens that that you've you know come from your flocks or stock you need to get used to that death because sadly everything doesn't live just like in human life there are some babies that are born stillborn and there are some goats that for whatever reason um they can be born and seem like they're fine they're alive when they're born but the mother knows something's wrong with them and she won't take care of those goats and neither will any of the other female goats either so it's kind of like they can sense a birth defect or something and they just it just dies there's nothing you can do about it um chickens are kind of the same way and and really all animals are that way so it, it doesn't really happen like death doesn't happen as far as the animals go on my homestead that often um chickens i lose because of predators just like everybody does if you're ever going to have chickens you're going to have predator problems I guarantee it no matter what you do no matter how much electric fence you have no matter how many guard dogs you have predators are someday going to get your chickens it's just a fact of life um the when i first was raising rabbits i was looking forward to like the first litter of rabbits and i caught midway the mother had ate almost all of the rabbits right after they were born <laughs> that's a known thing that rabbits do their first litter they often eat them and i've had people tell me that some cats some breeds of cats are like that too they'll eat their first litter so but that's the kind of stuff like some of these youtube channels they're not really giving you real content they're giving you what they think you want to believe is a homesteading lifestyle and my channel isn't going to be like that. I'm going to give you the good and the bad and the gray areas and the dark areas and the happy areas and the sad areas. I'm going to deliver all of it because that is part of homesteading. You have to be able to handle that stuff. And if you go into homesteading thinking that every day there's just rainbows and flowers and butterflies, you're going to have a bad time. And I, I, don't, I don't want to mislead anybody about it. And, and I won't mislead anybody about it. Um, if you want to be misled, there's channels out there that will do that. So anyways, that's what today's thing was. I really want people to, if you really feel like that you're going to sound stupid or, or you're going to ask a question that's going to make you, by all means, look me up on Instagram. Most people have Instagram. It's just Instagram.com. Wiget, E-D, W-I-G-E-T-E-D. So it's my first name first name last name kind of like reversed instead of ed wiggett it's wiggett ed all one word add me as a friend there send me a private message if you really feel that way but i really don't want you to feel that way because when you ask a question on my youtube channel you're possibly helping other people that have the same question and and then i only have to reply once because they're likely going to see that reply without them ever asking and see you feeling stupid for a minute save someone else from feeling stupid so there's that anyways as always god bless you god bless your families god bless your homesteads thank you for watching